morning. Welcome to Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church on this fourth and final Sunday of Advent. We're glad you're here with us today. I, I just have a few announcements before I turn it over to Ashley for the community update. First of all, I want to just thank you for your generosity, your financial generosity over the course of this past year. This has been a very difficult year, as we all know, but you have been faithful in your giving. So we have been able to sustain this community in ways that um, many communities are not being sustained. So thank you. A couple other announcements along those same lines. On Christmas Eve each year, when we take up a collection during our Christmas Eve services, the collection is used to fund what is called the Pastor's Discretionary Fund. We get calls here at the office all the time throughout the year um, from people who are in need. And we use the offering that's collected on Christmas Eve to fund our response to that need. So if you'd like to support that, since we're, we're not going to have our regular services this year, we will have a couple um, limited opportunities for folks to gather outside, and we'll have a couple recorded services for you. We're not going to have a chance to, to be together and to take up a formal offering. So if you'd like to support the pastor's discretionary fund for the coming year, you can either mail a check to the church, write a check and mail it to 4415 Pleasant Grove Church Road, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27613. Or you can go on our website at PGUMC over on the right hand side of the homepage as a give tab. And if you click on that, you'll see a way that you can designate your gift to the discretionary fund. And if you have questions about this, you can always call the church 919-787-7763. And Julie can answer any questions that you may have about that. Oh, and one more question or one more uh, announcement about giving. If you are planning to make a contribution um, to the church in this calendar year, that contribution needs to be received by the church before the end of the year. So if you have questions, again, contact Julie at the office. All right. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent. Christmas Eve is this Thursday. And you'll hear more about that in just a moment. So I'm going to turn it over to Ashley. Ashley? Happy fourth Sunday of Advent. I'd like to begin today with a special thank you message from our Young Disciples class. I want to take a few minutes to update everyone at Pleasant Grove on the Robinson County Christmas Store project that we held for 2020. This year has been very difficult for everyone with the COVID pandemic and our church hasn't even been able to meet in person since March. The Young Disciples Sunday School class has been meeting either through Zoom Sunday School calls or with virtual pre-recorded lessons. So to be honest, back in September of this year, wasn't sure how we were gonna be able to orchestrate this project again this year. I thought about it a lot. I talked with Jeanette Day, who teaches the Sunday school class with me. I talked to Ashley, and I talked to some of the parents from kids in the class. We all knew the need in Robinson County was going to be great this year with the pandemic, and we wanted to try to do something, even if it wasn't exactly the same as we'd done before. We wanted to help out the kids down there for Christmas. I'm so happy to report to you that with your help, we had a very successful project this year. Not even the pandemic and virtual wor worship could keep us down. The combined total given to the project by the Young Disciples and the Pleasant Grove congregation was a little over $3,700. I'm gonna be honest, that amount was way beyond my hopes and wishes for this year's project. I was and still am completely overwhelmed by the generosity of our Pleasant Grove family. In addition to the $3,700, there was also $700 in toys on top of that that had been purchased by members of the congregation and donated to the project. Here's how we made it all work. The Young Disciples as a class once again signed pledge forms to donate their own money to the project. The kids made video announcements that some of you have probably seen this past month for the virtual worship services. Julie set us up with online do donations on the website. Since we couldn't go shopping as a group due to safety reasons, we divided up the shopping duties. We had seven parents volunteer to take their child shopping one-on-one -on -one at a time and place where they felt comfortable and safe. Each parent-child parent, parent -child team had a shopping assignment and a shopping budget, so we had a nice variety of toys being purchased. They shopped and then delivered the toys back to the welcoming center at Pleasant Grove. After that, I went shopping with several of my elves, my husband Dave, daughter Erica, and our family friend Olivia, 
And on December 8th, we finished our shopping and then the four of us loaded up all the toys in the van. The complete back rear storage area was full to the top and most of the passenger area was filled with toys. On Friday, December 11th, Bob Starks and Terry Sawyers delivered the toys to the Robinson County Community Center. The heat, Bob reported that the staff was really grateful for everything that had been done and by this congregation and sent down to them. It's really gonna help out the Christmas store and help them have nice toys, nice presents for the children down there. We do have some pictures of the shoppers and we also have some pictures of the toy delivery. So Ashley will be posting those on the social media site for Pleasant Grove, so be sure to check them out. The Young Disciples could not do this project without all of you. We are so thankful for the generosity of the Pleasant Grove congregation and your support of our project year after year. You truly are helping to make Christmas brighter for the kids in Robinson County. Thank you. Again, thank you for all of your support and the many outreach efforts of our church. Although this year is different than most, the reason for celebrating is the same. And we hope that you will take the time um, to, to worship on Christmas Eve. And we are offering both a family service and a candlelight uh, traditional service online. And you can find that on our Facebook page, our website, and on YouTube. If you are signed up to attend our 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock services here, Please, please, please remember that if you're attending, if you are a vehicle parking, if you will come between 415 and 430 for the five o'clock service and six to 615 for the seven o'clock service. And if you are outdoor seating, if you will come from 430 to five for the five o'clock service and 615 to seven for the seven o'clock service, there is a method to the madness. So please, please, please adhere to these instructions. To date, I do have some great news. The face mask, face mask ministry has donated 8,948 masks on your behalf and supplied another 263 to the Pleasant Grove community, bringing our grand total to 9,211 masks. And every time I hear these numbers, I'm just amazed and, and proud of this, this congregation and their willingness to give up their time and their money and their um, and their talents uh, to be part of this ministry. So I did want to share something. We had dropped off with us last week this wreath, and it is made out of several of the leftover spools from our face mask ministry, and there are several more where that come, come, came from. But I wanted to show you this because you will see this in Christmases to come and Advents to come as a commemoration of, of the year 2020. And I'm really excited about this, and I think this is really cool, so I wanted to share with you. We've had some fun and games with our Instagram and Facebook and nativity scenes for, your, for these last few weeks. But if you would like to see all of the nativity pictures, please uh, worship with us on December 27th. I almost said January. We're not there yet. December 27th, we will be showcasing all of the nativity scenes in our worship service, and it is, it is a beautiful thing to see. So please, please tune into that service. We do have a live nativity scene here tonight from 5.30 to 6. Please come out, show your support, honk, clap, uh, wave, whatever, um, and support this, this nativity family tonight that will be out in the cold. And again, that is from 5.30 to 6. Thank you, Ashley. Now, I know what you're thinking. How come there are only three candles lit if this is the fourth Sunday of Advent? Well, you'll see in just a moment. We'll light the fourth candle. All right. I want you to take a deep breath in, exhale, just relax, and let's prepare ourselves for worship as we listen to our centering peace. <laughs>
Let us join in prayer as we bow for our invocation. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, as we come to this place of peace, we are ever mindful of the darkness and chaos that seems poised to swallow our lives. Therefore, we're grateful for moments such as this. So at this moment, tune our hearts to sing a new song, a song grounded in your love, and then Allow that song to be heard in and through the living of our lives. In Christ's name, we offer this prayer. Amen. Oh, yeah. 
we have lit three candles for hope, for peace, and for joy. Today we light the fourth candle, the candle of love. With this flame, we signify the love of God that surrounds and fills us at all times. There is no greater power than love. It is stronger than rulers and empires, stronger than grief or despair, stronger than a pandemic, stronger even than death. We love because God loves us. Loving God, we open ourselves to you this Christmas season. All these candles are lit. Light our lives with your imagination. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained, but must be shared. Magnify your love with us. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Today's Old Testament lesson comes from the second book of Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and 16. Now, when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, I never spake a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you, may, you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from the following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went. And I have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more. As formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Typically, at this point in the service, I would ask you to pause the service and go to your phones and your computers and your windows and doors and extend the peace of Christ to your neighbors, to this world. But I don't want you to pause it today because we're having music playing during the Passion of Peace. But I still want you to pass the peace, but just don't pause the service because it's beautiful music. This time of year, although it, it is a time of light and joy and anticipation for some, it is, it is a very difficult time. It's a dark time. It is a, a time when grief um, feels almost overwhelming if they've experienced some loss in, in the previous year or so. So we need to remind them, our friends, our neighbors, our loved ones, that God is with them. And as, body, as the body of Christ, we extend that love and that presence through our touch. So as 
Christ's music plays, go share the peace of Christ with others. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. This is a lectionary reading for this day, this fourth Sunday of Advent. As I read these familiar words, once again, listen for something new that's being spoken into your life and your heart at this particular point in your faith journey, at this particular point when we are preparing to celebrate Christmas, celebrate the Incarnation. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from the thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All right. You know the story. We all know the story, right? The angel Gabriel is sent to the small village of Nazareth to a young woman named Mary. And there, Gabriel informs Mary that she has been selected, selected to bear the Christ child. Now, we don't think too much about that today because it's familiar to us. But it's really a stunning theological statement, really. We're talking about the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one of God, and all that that would mean to someone living in first century Jewish Palestine. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Wow. Friends, that's big. That's very big news. Well, without reading any further, let me just ask you, what do you do? What do you do when you get big news? I mean, really big news. You tell somebody. 
Right? Sure, sure. I mean, that's the way it works. Well, some things never change. Uh, because that's exactly what Mary did, right? After hastily arranging a trip, she travels to visit her kinswoman, Elizabeth, um, to share the big news with her. Well, when Mary arrives, she learns that Elizabeth has some big news of her own to share. Like Mary, she is expecting a child. And she, like Mary, is stunned by the news. It's extraordinary. You know, something's going on. You know, something big is going on here. Now, of course, we all know it, right? We've, we've read the rest of the book. We've seen the movie, right? Hmm. Elizabeth's child will grow up to be John the Baptist. Mary's child will grow up to be Jesus. Okay. But that's jumping too far ahead, right? After all, we still have a few days left. Okay. Well, it's during this visit with Elizabeth and Mary that Mary gathers up everything that's going on in this amazing song. It's called the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. You know, maybe instead of reading Twas the Night Before Christmas, we, we should gather our families together later this week and read this, the Magnificat. You know, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. The scene has inspired folks for 2,000 years. So here we are. Here we are. The fourth and final Sunday of Advent. The text is the Magnificat. Now we just saw what Mary did with that news from Gabriel. You know, the question is, what are we going to do with the news now that we've heard it? What are we going to do with the news of the Incarnation? Now this may seem... A bit odd. After all, it's here, right? You know, Christmas is here. Well, it will be in a little more than four days. The waiting is nearly over. You know, it's time to get on with it. I don't want to talk anymore about the waiting and what we're going to do. I mean, why are we reading the text today? The fourth Sunday of Advent. Well, don't look at me. Don't look at me. It's a lectionary text for the fourth Sunday of Advent. The only sense that I can make of it is that with all the momentum pushing us toward Christmas, this text today acts kind of as a break a little bit, you know, a break of sorts. You know, it makes a statement, you know, everybody just calm down. Just calm down. Take a deep breath. Relax. Breathe in. This is still Advent. This is still Advent. Hmm. You know, today, today we're still getting ready. We're still getting ready. So the question hangs there. What are we going to do with the news when we get it later this week? The news that God is with us. Okay, let's just step back a minute and take, a, take stock of where we are exactly. Today is December 20. This coming Thursday is Christmas Eve. At sundown on Thursday, the 12-day festival of Christmas begins the festival of incarnation but that's still four days away right now we're still waiting and we're trying to figure out the best way to respond now of course we've been there and done that right sure and that's the good news and and the bad news the good news it's good news because we have all experienced the magic of christmas the the mystical nature of christmas before the joy of the celebration of jesus's birth we look forward to it with like childlike anticipation but it's also the bad news because we have celebrated christmas year after year after year we become desensitized to the radicality of that it proclaims to us the reality of a sacredness that circumscribes our lives. Back a few weeks ago, I made the comment that the reason so many of us periodically find ourselves making statements like, where has the time gone? It seemed like just yesterday, blah, blah, blah. And we have experiences, we've experienced that type of feeling so many times. It's because although we reflect on our lives linearly, we live our lives cyclically. We record our history literally, but we live it seasonally. We know we lead tightly circumscribed cyclical lives. 
And these various seasons move independently for the most part, right? You know, we, we can live sports season at the same time. We're, we're vacation season, school season, on and on. We, we have all these, you know, different seasons going on. But within this personal universe of seasons, there's always one meta season, one season that's above all the other seasons in importance. One season that supersedes all others. And our dominant season. Now, this is a very important fact to note. In our lives, not all seasons are created equally. No. Therefore, we need to be very, very careful which season we allow to give meaning to our lives, to order our lives, or, or if we're not careful, to disorder our lives if we pick um, poorly. Hmm. So in about 100 hours, 100 hours or so, the Christmas season will begin again. And once again, we will celebrate incarnation. Now, what if we decided individually and collectively that this year our life directing, our life ordering, our life giving season was going to be the Christmas season. That was going to be our meta season. What if we decide today that we're going to spend the next 11 months reflecting on what it means for our lives to be enmeshed in God, in grace, in goodness? What would that life look like? What might that mean for our lives? What if every day we begin with the thought that God is with us in whatever way we understand or envision that presence? Emmanuel. What might that do for us? What, what might that do for the world? So what if this coming Thursday night, as we listen to the story again, we decide to accept the invitation to locate our place within this larger context of meaning. The incarnation. In the context that good news, that hope, that joy is intertwined in our being. It's who we are. You know the word magnificat is related to the word magnify, as in my soul magnifies the Lord. It makes larger, it makes more conspicuous, or makes more pronounced. You know, Mary says to the Gabriel, my soul magnifies the Lord. Now, in the story, Mary is confronted by the possibility that God's grace that can be made manifest even in and through the life of an unknown, young, single woman living in a God forsaken hinterland village called Nazareth. She knows that that's not the way God's supposed to work. In fact, she's been told that for as long as she can remember. You know, everyone knows it. But what she's beginning to entertain in this world-changing moment is that, that maybe, just maybe, she and everyone else has been wrong about it. Wow. Maybe, just maybe, the sacred can be made real in and through her. And that realization leads her into song. And she starts to sing. What an image. What an image. So here we are. Fourth Sunday of Advent. So the question before us today is this. First, what are we going to do? On Thursday night when we hear the news again. But second are, second, secondarily, what are we going, are we going to continue the song? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Are we going to continue to sing? Hmm. In other words, what are we going to make great in and, through, in and through our lives this coming year? If Christmas is going to be our dominant season. What are we going to magnify? What are we going to make more, what are we going to make larger, more conspicuous, more pronounced in this world through the way we live? You know, we need to think about this. You know, things like how are we going to treat our fellow human beings, even those who look and sound different than we do, those who align with a, a different faith than we do? You know, what, you know, just something like what type of jokes are we going to tell this year? And at whose expense? 
What kind of comments are we going to make this year? You know, oh, how are we going to spend our short, precious time on this earth? You know, how are we going to use the resource in which, with, with which we have been entrusted? Hmm. In other words, what spirit is going to be poured into this world through our lives? What are we going to sing, folks? What are we going to sing this year when we get the news? It's the fourth Sunday of Advent. But Thursday at sundown, it will be Christmas. The time is at hand. So how are we going to respond this year? What's going to order our lives? What is our song going to be? Well, how about this classic? Emmanuel. Okay. I'll end where I begin. With Mary. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Four days. Time to ponder things in our hearts. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, as we prepare to go to God in a time of prayer, you are invited to share your joys and your concerns with the rest of your church family. And you can do the, that through a couple of, of ways. First, you can call the church office at 919-787-7763 and leave a voicemail on, on the, the answer machine. And Julie will compile those prayer concerns and um, send those out in an email later this week. Or you can email the church office. You can go to the church website at pgumc.org and you can email us with that, that joy or that concern. And again, it will go on the, the weekly uh, prayer list. We always begin our prayer time each week with silent prayer because there are always many prayers, especially at this time of year, that, that weigh on our hearts. So we, we spend a few moments in silent prayer and then we have a brief time of pastoral prayer and conclude our prayer time as we do each week with the Lord's Prayer. So let's go now to God in silent prayer.
Let us pray. For all the times and all the ways we have resisted your presence in our lives, for seeking wholeness through lesser things, for standing in the pride of our own perceived self-significance, for insisting on our own tired and broken ways, for our narrow vision of your expansive grace, and for our stinginess in extending that grace to others. Lord, have mercy upon us. And as this Advent season draws to a close, free our lives from the waiting game as you lead us down new paths of living. We ask this prayer, we ask all our prayers in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and forevermore. Go now from the sanctuary in peace. Amen.